The beginning of the year is a good time to review our financial decisions and set new goals. This may be in the form of wiping out debt, saving up for the future, or building an emergency fund for that peace of mind. Here with us is financial planner and motivational speaker, Christopher Cervantes, to give us some tips on how to be financially stable this 2022. Hi, Christopher. Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year, Mike. <laughs> okay, now what should be our financial mindset this 2022? Yes, so thank you for having me. What a very timely question. You know why? We encounter calamities almost every year. If you will notice, nearly every Christmas season, we always need to help lots of our kababayan, either because of natural disasters like major typhoons or disasters like a ship that sank. But despite all these things that happened in the past, I don't know if we can say that we are a resilient nation or simply a nation that predominantly um, embraces the bahala na culture. And now pandemic happens and obviously we are not yet out of the woods. I believe that it's very timely that we need to change our mindset this time from bahala na to I am responsible. Being responsible is not taking blame or blaming others, but rather than looking for a scapegoat, you are looking for a way forward. And it goes with our finances. Now that we experience all these things that happened or still happening, expect that there's a good possibility that it can still happen in the future. So the question is, how to be responsible in our financial life? I'm sure our kababayan heard it already many times from the experts that we need to have a fully funded emergency fund, a good amount of insurance coverage, and we need to prepare funds for our children's education and regularly invest for our golden years. But this time, the most glaring reality is that we are responsible for ensuring that all those financial ideas will really happen. Mm -hmm. Well, times have been rough for millions of families and we can't blame our kababayans who are financially distraught because of the impact and the uncertainties brought on by the pandemic. Now, what is your advice for them? So my advice is, of course, no, uh, uh, be prepared for this kind of calamities. Like, for example, no, um, having a, a emergency disaster preparedness fund. This is separate from your personal financial, uh, personal emergency fund. And if you can invest uh, as much as you can, invest every moment you receive your salary. Okay, well, let's talk about debt. Debt is one of the main sources of our stress. Now, can you give us a concrete plan of action on how to get out of debt, or at least as we try to get out of debt? Well, um, getting out of debt is not just simply paying your debts. The usual problem I see during my coaching session is that they ask how to pay a 500,000 credit card debt. And if you will give them the technique and strategies, they will be able to pay that debt only to find themselves in yet another round of problems. But this time, it's no longer 500,000, but 1 million pesos. So every year, many, many people get richer simply because they get into debt but many also committed suicide. So maybe that is not the problem. But if you are having a problem because of it, the first thing that you need to do is find out what led you to this situation. Mm -hmm. And based on what I've seen many times, the main reason is that they are using debt to buy things that they can afford to project something to their peers which they are not. So how can you emerge out of debt? change your mindset about being rich. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's not about you having all the latest fads, but rather enjoying life without worrying how you can afford it. But uh, which should be done first? Paying off our debt or saving money? Because uh, this may be hard to balance for many people. What is the best way for our Kababayans to save money? Uh, if you're paying more for borrowing, um, borrowing than you're getting on your savings, it makes sense to pay off your loans. But don't do that if you don't have an emergency fund yet. So if you're in debt, it's, a good, uh, it's good to set a basic emergency fund first for at least three months. That, that's part of what we call paying ourselves first. 
Then after that, eliminate the highest interest-bearing debts by prioritizing it before even investing. Okay, um, finally, many of us are also looking for ways on how to double our money by looking for maybe additional sources of income or by investing. What are the best ways to grow our hard-earned money this pandemic? So I can give four tips. Uh, number one is to invest in your education, you, uh, is to invest in yourself, educate yourself. Remember, there are many investment opportunities out there. But how you can invest your money, how you invest your money right now, is directly proportional to your knowledge about investing. So if you want to grow your money, grow your mind first. And second, focus on your investing percentage rather than the potential rate of return of your investment. So if you are earning 100,000 every month, what percentage are you willing to commit every month? Remember, you cannot control how you invest, how your investment uh, perform, but you can control how how much you invest. And third, uh, don't get to know your 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 risk uh, tolerance. You should only take as much investment risk as your investment goal requires, and your stomach can bear. Just because you can take more risk doesn't mean you should. And during this pandemic, many people learned it the hard way. And lastly, don't be afraid to ask for help. Get a coach or financial planner to guide you and help you be grounded with your financial plan. Very wise words. And thank you so much for this financial stability exchange. Our financial planner and motivational speaker, Christopher Cervantes.